the mayor of the city of Indianapolis, Joe Hogsett. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So even one year later, I still got nothing. <laughs> you know, what, what have I done wrong? I mean, I try to do a good job as mayor. I love FDIC. By the way, welcome to Indianapolis, and thank you for being here. But why, each and every year, do they ask me to come out here and follow Bobby Holton? No one follows Bobby Holton. The truth is, Bobby is a, is a great friend. He's a great friend for all fire service personnel. He's a great friend for this conference. Frankly, he's a great friend to the city of Indianapolis. The truth is, he's not only a great friend, but the fire department instructors conference would not be the success the resource, the great asset that it is today without the leadership of Bobby Halton. Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> Let me just tell you a quick story. Uh, that has been meaningful to me. Tr truly, this is my second year as mayor. Many of you may remember um, me giving a welcome on behalf of the city last year. And as I just said, Bobby inspired us all. And I came out and followed him. But what you don't realize is and would never know unless I shared it with you, as I embraced Bobby as he exited the stage, knowing full well that I was going to have to follow Bobby, we hugged, and then he shook my hand. And in his hand, as his hand met mine, was the FDIC's commemorative challenge coin for 2016. And he leaned over and he very quickly explained to me, we print 800 to 1,000, I can't remember the number, specific numbered commemorative challenge coins every year. And we give them to honored guests, leaders from throughout the country, fire service personnel. And as he gave it to me, he looked down and he said, I pulled this coin out specifically for you. And I hold it before you today. It's commemorative coin number 343. Now, I've been given honors in my lifetime. I've been blessed in that regard. Nothing means more to me, though, than carrying with me each day to protect me 
2016 FDIC's commemorative coin, 343. And it is in that spirit that I welcome you again to Indianapolis. For many of you, I know that this isn't your first visit. And I certainly hope for all of you, it's not your last visit to this great city. Believe me when I say, Indianapolis considers it a distinct honor to host FDIC year after year because in no small measure, when I look out among the thousands of people in this audience, when I look out across this room, I do see the very best that this country is made of, the men and the women who keep our American and Canadian communities safe and secure. So between the classes, the demonstrations, all of the activities of this week, I hope and I know, I trust that you will take time to explore our city, to take advantage of everything that FDIC provides you during the day, and I hope that you have the opportunity to enjoy Indianapolis as well. Don't take my word for it. I mean, I'm the mayor, so I'm a homer. Turn to the one who sits to your left. Turn to the one who sits to your right. Turn to the ones who have put their time in at FDICs over the years because they've got stories to tell. Good stories, fun stories, happy stories, welcoming stories. So before I give up the mic, and go back to give Bobby yet another year's grief. Let me once again thank all of you. Thank you for all that you do for your communities, for the people that you protect, for the people that you serve. Thank you on behalf of this city for what you do for your communities. And during the course of this week, I truly do hope that you enjoy ours. May God bless you all. May God bless the FDIC. And may God bless, forever bless, the United States of America. Thank you very much. the Chief of the Indianapolis Fire Department, Ernest Malone. We got theme music this morning. I didn't know that one. All right. Well, good morning, and thank you for being here. On behalf of the 1,300 men and women of the Indianapolis Fire Department, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Indianapolis. We are honored to be part of the celebration recognizing the annual Fire Department Instructors Conference for its 90th anniversary. I think that deserves a hand for those folks. As a city and department, we could not be more proud to be hosting this very special event for an amazing 23rd time. While you are here, Please consider yourself part of our fire and emergency services family. Those who proudly serve our great city are welcome, are ready to assist you in any way possible. If we can be of service during your visit, please just ask, and we will find a way to help your stay here be a more enjoyable, educational, 
and rewarding experience. Uh, there's a lot of people here, but there's one special guest I, I want to recognize. Uh, I don't know what the partnership is like in your city, but we have a wonderful police chief, and he's my public safety partner. I'd like for the chief of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department, Brian Roach, please stand up, chief. Give him a hand if you would, please. Indianapolis Fire Department is a performance-driven, full-service, all-hazard mitigation agency. Our organization's mission is to save lives, protect property and the environment, while serving our community with courage, commitment, and compassion. Our promise to our citizens is this, we will practice CPR. For us, that means courteous, professional, and respectful services to all who come to our city. I would be remiss if I did not recognize the 294 firefighters currently on duty protecting us while we're here. Give them a hand for me, please. Thank you, they deserve it. As you make your way through, <clears throat> through the city of Indianapolis, I want you to know that you may pass fire stations and fire equipment. Each time you see a man or woman wearing our uniform, you are seeing a dedicated public servant who is highly trained and committed to keeping you and your family safe. We truly embrace, embrace here in the IFD that it's our family serving your family. Indianapolis is an outstanding community with what I think is a world-class fire department. We've been protecting this city for over 158 years. We're an organization made up of men and women with very diverse cultural backgrounds. Our department members work very closely with our city residents and business leaders to make our city as safe as possible. I'm confident when I say that no matter where your interests lie in the fire service, IFD has skilled professionals ready to serve you. Our department has 43 stations divided into seven strategically placed battalions. We operate out of four functional bureaus, administration, operations, logistics, and technical services. Each of these bureaus are led by incredibly talented deputy chiefs uh, who have the ability to get things done. We look for positive outcomes, and I think that's directly related to both the sworn and civilian members they get to work with. I think FDIC is such an amazing event. One of the best things about this conference is that it was developed with a common sense approach. It seeks to enhance the skills of firefighters, not only in the traditional roles of our fire service, but in preparing for the challenges in an ever-changing world that we will face tomorrow. Regardless of how many years we have in this profession, we are all students of this service. I believe that it's very important to remember that the policies, practices, techniques, and many of the improvements we employ, they were born out of a tragedy. They were born from the sacrifice of men and women who gave their lives trying to save others. And far too often that effort turned into us trying to save our own. You see, as firefighters, we will keep our promise and we will honor our oath. Our countries, our states, our cities, and our towns endure in the dedication of those like you who keep us safe. Our duty to protect our communities has not lessened, it is, nor has it gotten any easier. It continues to grow in complexity, hazard, and risk. As firefighters, we must be up to that challenge every shift, every day, and every time that tone goes off. The people we serve are depending on us, and we will not let them down. Again, I would like to offer a special note to those of you who are officers or who aspire to be officers. This subject is very near and dear to me. It is an accurate statement that based on your promotion, you have position, title, authority, rank, power, and certainly influence. But I caution you that you do not automatically have the respect of the men and women you serve. That you will have to earn. You will earn it by what you do, not by what you say. Do you engage them? 
involve them, motivate them, challenge them, and most importantly, do they know you truly care about them? It's my opinion that being a leader has everything to do about with them and very little to do with us. Maybe you should listen a lot more than you talk. You just might learn something about your people, and for that matter, you may learn something about yourself. Strong officers stand up for themselves, but even stronger officers stand up for others. Displaying humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. If one were to look at many agency titles for those like you and me who are charged with the oversight of other people, we would see terms like owner, supervisor, manager, commissioner, director, etc. You may have noticed that I didn't use the term leader. I hope you did. You most certainly are fire service officers and that's a great achievement for sure. But being promoted does not make you a leader nor does putting on your new helmet and your shiny collar bars or bugles. Your future as a leader in our great profession can only be determined by you and by the firefighters you guide, protect, and serve. You see, I don't want you to lead by showing examples of your power. What I'm asking you to do is lead by displaying the power of your example. Yes, you may have been promoted and assigned as their superior officer, but make no mistake, they will be the final judge if you are their leader or not. Don't let being promoted change who you are. Instead, let it reveal who you are. Don't just show them the big picture, let them help you draw it. Stick to your processes and goals and stay focused and committed. Don't give up just because it gets hard, and we all know it, it gets hard at times. Please don't let the things you cannot do interfere with all the good you can do. As someone once said, if it's important to you, you will find a way. And if it's not, we're very good at finding excuses. Stay positive and don't be afraid to let your passion show for our job. Others will feed off of your enthusiasm and your energy. I like to use a quote. I remember that impossible is not a fact, it's someone's opinion. And if you break down the word impossible, it spells out I'm possible. While much of what we do is data driven, I believe we must remain people focused. Every action or inaction for that matter that we take has, effect, has an effect on our customers, both our communities and our firefighters. You know, one day we will all just be a memory to those we are charged with leading and protecting. I say while we're doing this, why don't we do our best to be a good memory? I am honored to be the chief of an outstanding progressive fire department such as IFD. I believe the professional manner in which our men and women perform their duties each day is second to none. And I can tell you I'm so very proud to serve with them. Please feel free to visit any of our 43 stations and enjoy the hospitality of your fellow brothers and sisters. Indianapolis has a variety of attractions in both our downtown and surrounding areas. As you make your way around the city, you will find an abundance of restaurants, shopping, and cultural attractions await you. Please make a point to stop by our fire museum at our brand new uh, local 416's brand new Union Hall. It's a wonderful facility. Take, a, take some time to experience our history, and while you're there, they promise me there are refreshing beverages to be had for everyone. Finally, I would like to just thank you for what you do every day. The term fire department just doesn't describe what we're charged with doing. The duties, roles, and responsibilities of today's public safety agencies go far beyond that. Please commit yourself to passing on your knowledge and experience that you gain while attending this conference to all of those in your agency that were not fortunate enough to be able to attend. It is our responsibility to continue both the development of our incumbent firefighters 
while continue to pave a way for those new people joining our service. It is your work and your commitment to our profession that will continue to make ours a great service. The International Fire Service is comprised of many organizations that have very proud histories and traditions. I believe that those of you here clearly demonstrate by your willingness to seek out additional training opportunities and better yourself that this fire service generation has the heart to keep that tradition and the ability to safeguard our communities. I thank you. Welcome to Indianapolis. Enjoy your training. Please welcome the governor of the great state of Indiana, Eric Holcomb. Well, good morning, standing room only. Welcome back to Indiana. Uh, I first and foremost want to thank you profusely. As you may know, if you're not uh, from this state, you may have heard that we were supposed to still be in our long budget session, legislative session, but because you all got locked in early, uh, we got our job done early. And now I have the State House back to myself, so thank you so much. But uh, seriously, we are um, so glad to once again host you here in our capital city, and I'm honored not just to, not just to speak with you uh, today, this morning, briefly, but I'm really just honored to be in the same room with you. As Indiana's governor, I get it. I know that you and your uh, colleagues back home, your coworkers are essential to your communities, whether it's a, a large one or a small one. You have so much to do with the safety and the security of our neighborhoods and our cities and towns in our states, and nothing, nothing is more important than that. I know that your duties, I've seen it, up close and personal, cover things from answering those 911 calls, and they're always met with your calm expertise. You're on the front lines when there's floods and tornadoes and blizzards or earthquakes, and when other disasters strike, you're always the first on the scene, and when they do strike, it's always you all that are clearing the roads and delivering all the essentials to our neighbors and rescuing those from dangerous situations that many can't fathom. And while a lot of Americans just go about their daily lives, go about their business and take for granted what you face, waking up every morning not knowing what's coming, I want you to know that I don't, and Indiana doesn't take for granted what you do any second of any day. We are especially proud of our Hoosier firefighters. I might add, we believe they are second to none, so I just want you to join our family while you're here, as you've done in the past, and please enjoy your stay in our state capital. It's always sunny and 70 year-round here in Indianapolis. I trust you're gonna reconnect with longtime friends from, from around the country and around the world and make some new friends while you're here. And I just wanna really encourage you to spend a lot of money while you're here. <laughs> if you can't afford to get home, we will, we will make you an honorary Hoosier on the spot. We will work on relocating your families back here to Indiana. Our light is always on for you and and I'm assuming that by the time you do, if you can afford to go back home, I'm assuming this is gonna be a dry county. Thank you all very much. Have a great conference. We'll see you again. Thank you.